for how he has been gracious and loving to our lives. And also we want to thank you for our viewers, for how you have been following our Facebook page, and also your, how you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. And we believe that uh, this message you have been preaching in this season has been a blessing to each one of us, enlightening us, and also uh, making us to make wise decisions that are based on the word and what is in the mind of God for us today. Uh, there are many things we have shared, and today I, I had an opportunity to reflect on some of the things that uh, the Lord has been ministering to us. We have tackled on many things, and this is a new day for you. And uh, the new day is that God wants uh, you to make a transition. And uh, when you speak about the issue of transition, sometimes there are those who do not understand uh, how to act and how to do what to do and the wisdom to apply in the season of transition in their personal life because uh, transition is an in-between moment where either you have not arrived where you are heading to or you are still you have not yet left where you are you are coming from so you are in between and sometimes when we are in such kind of transition in our lives uh, when we are not keen we end up being uh, different and uh, viewing our life differently and some of the people will miss their purpose, their mandate and uh, what God wants them to do in a personal uh, way and also in a corporate way because God's vision is sometimes personal and sometimes that personal vision will lead you in a corporate way. He comes and talks to you but also in his mind is, there is what he has for other people. For instance, when he called Abraham, he called him as one. That's what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah. When I called your father Abraham, he was one. I called him as one person. But God calling one person, he had in mind many other people. When God called Abraham, he blessed him as one person. And you know, the blessing of God cannot be contained by one person. The blessing of God should be distributed. Whatsoever God gives to one man is meant to be distributed to other people giving out that's why god said i'm making you a blessing so that you'll become a blessing so that means you cannot contain what i have given you the blessing maker the rich there is a power of producing and reproducing itself when you are receiving it so when god calls a person he gives him a mandate and in that mandate it is a journey to fulfill what god has for you 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 take on a journey Life is a series of a decision you make, and also life is a journey. You are, you are journeying to your destiny, what God has already pointed you into. The Bible says that God called Abraham, and when he called him, he was alone. And so that means sometimes for us to make transition, we must be flexible to receive what God wants us to receive. So I want us to focus on transition, how to transition in times of crisis how we can transition in times of crisis. You know, there are some people who are stuck in crisis. There are some who are stuck because trouble has come. They are stuck, they are unable to move. Maybe things are not moving the way you planned. So the crisis uh, requires you make transition. And that transition is either you move uh, forward with your life. There are some of us who either we are no longer working, we are jobless, some of us are sick, some of us, our businesses are not doing well. Some of us, we have lost some relationships. Some of us, we are in a, in a, in a, in a, in a way where we want to move from something else uh, to something else. And uh, we, maybe sometimes without applying the wisdom that God has for us, we can be stuck. So it is very key to know how to handle transition in time of crisis. Because crisis, yes, will come. But how do you transit from this place to this place and, that, and that's where we see the aspect of restoration you know there are people who no matter what happens to their life even if God restores what they had lost they cannot be able to manage it because in the season of transition and crisis they were unable to transit they moved on with a certain thing that was not to move on with in their life and Abraham is one of the key personal character that I want us to focus on at this study concerning transition in time of crisis. Now, first of all, what is transition? Uh, uh, looking at the uh, 
dictionary definition of transition is the period of passing from one condition from one stage activity place uh, to another so you are moving from one condition you are moving from one form from one stage from one activity from one place to another condition to another stage from another activity to another place and now you see you, we require to have wisdom in the time of transition so that we can be so precise we can our step can be well calculated that we are not going to miss anything in the in the process of transition so sometimes you find you're in one condition but you want to change you're in one form you want to transit you are in one stage you are transiting you are in an activity engaging something in one place and you must make transition so that means transition it is a shift you are shifting you enter into a journey uh, in your life where you are journeying towards something you have seen or something either god has shown you or something the spirit of the lord wants you to achieve uh, in your life it is to move or to cause someone or something to move in a different place that is what to shift is you are shifting it is to move or cause something or someone to move to a different place or position and uh, you are making somebody when a person is shifting it is moving from something and uh, you are moving from somewhere you are causing something to shift okay moving it from where it is to where you want it to be also to shift is to change or cause something to change to a different opinion or belief you cause something to change also to, uh, to shift uh, it is to go or cause something to go from one person to or thing to another you are shifting somebody or something from someone who had something bringing it to somebody else now that is shifting also to shift it is to exchange or to replace by another you, there is a change a process of change when we encounter transition now the book of uh, Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 is a very uh, uh, good scripture for us to understand the wisdom of transition and how God wants us to uh, uh, go through transition in life and we see Abraham was not in a crisis but Abraham become one of a good person for us who can borrow uh, from him and there are many people who are in such crisis and they made transition in their life they chose to move and uh, one of them is Abraham when there was famine the other one is I uh, Jacob when there was famine he was told by God to go to here uh, to the land of Egypt the other one is Joseph it was a for he was forced it was a negative transition he met uh, his uh, uh, his promotion in Egypt uh, Another one is Moses when he left palace and he went to the house of Jethro. That was a transition and there was a crisis there. And sometimes there are people who are broken down because of what is happening. And God wants you to handle transition uh, with the wisdom that he gives you so that you can be able to do what he wants you to do. The Bible said the Lord had said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, your father's household and go to the land I will show you. So there was a destination that God had in mind in the life of Abraham. There is a place God had seen. There is a place God had prepared. Now, now when God saw what he wanted to achieve, he came and spoke to Abraham. And that means that uh, the beginning of everything is the word of God, is the voice of God. Any transition that we want to make in life uh, must be aligned with what is in the mind of God for our life. The Bible said the Lord had the same. So the Abraham here had hesitated uh, because we see it in verse 11, uh, chapter 11, uh, God had said it to him, but Abraham had a decision to make. He had some people to, 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 to kiss goodbye. He had some things, he had to make some decision. The Bible said the Lord had said to Abraham, and so there was an aspect of uh, procrastination in his life where he procrastinated things, uh, until the right time came for him to act god was waiting upon him to act so the lord had said to abraham leave your country okay and your people and your father's household and go to the land i will show now this is transition you leave your people you leave your country you leave your family 
you leave your land and you go to the place where uh, I will show you there is a place God has for each one of us and the Bible says that uh, when you go and when you come to this place that I have for you God told Abraham uh, most of what you call uh, the Abrahamic covenant seven things that were to happen in the life of Abraham in verse 2 he tells him uh, I will make you into a great nation so Abraham had the potential the ability to become a nation but he never knew until he had moved from the place where God had set for him he could not become he had the potential to become but he could not become until he had moved according to God number two he said I will bless you so Abraham did not have a blessing God wanted him to have a blessing I will bless you he says that I will bless you and I will make your name great the name of Abraham was not great so God knew that Abraham will be a great nation and uh, what will make him uh, uh, to become a great nation is the blessing of God and he says and I will make your name great and I and you will be uh, you will be a blessing so those are uh, pointers God wanted him to see that uh, it was like God enticing Abraham to come to a place where he had prepared for him but he had to lure him maybe we can say for what we see there unless you move from where I want you to go you cannot become what I had planned for you and in verse 3 he says uh, that I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you I will curse and all the people on the earth will be blessed through you we have seen what uh, men are facing uh, uh, in, in the globe today and uh, there is an, a need for us to understand about transition, the wisdom of transition. There are people who can be either uh, lagged behind in life, can lag behind in many things because of the challenges. Really, as time we are having uh, some people who uh, their business have been shut down, uh, families are in, 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 in debt, and uh, uh, some churches are lagging behind in many ways, in many things. Uh, businesses are failing everything is not working the way it used to work uh, and that means uh, there should be an aspect of transition uh, how can we transit from where we were to where we are now and from where we are now to where God wants us to be because there is always a higher place in God in us there is always a higher place God wants us to take from one to move from one glory to another so God told Abraham to live and that is the wisdom that God wants us to do to live for where we are the book of Isaiah 48 uh, uh, 43 sorry the Bible speaks about forget uh, the the former things do not dwell on the on the on the on the on the, what has happened into your life and the Bible says when you forget then you can be able to appreciate what God has in mind for you forget the former beings do not dwell on the past and you see, there is a need for us to move on. There is a need for our life to continue moving on. There are some things which has died. We must not transit from there. When, when, when this man called Joshua, when he, 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 he was told by God, my servant Moses is dead, he was unable to move forward because there are some things which we hold so precious in our life. And when they die, when either they, we find that they are, they, are, they are dysfunctional or they are dead, uh, we are un unable to move forward. The Bible tells us, forget the former beings. Do not dwell uh, on, on the past. You know, the past has a way of limiting us. The past has a way of holding us back. We are unable to move forward and to see life uh, in a sober way. And that's why God told Moab, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Now you must transit. Uh, I am not going to restore Moses. I am not going to resurrect Moses. And there are some things which are dead in your life. Don't try to ask God to raise them because God tells you, see the former beings, see the new. And, and he says, uh, see, I am doing something new. Now in transition is where we forget the former beings uh, and we fail to dwell on the past uh, and we transit to this new being uh, God is doing in our life. The Bible says, for God, the former beings do not dwell on the past. Uh, and he says uh, that, see, I am doing something new. Open your eyes so that you can see. I am doing a new being uh, 
Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and stream in the waste land. Now, that means uh, God wants you to open up your eye. Don't be blinded by what you have lost. Don't be blinded by what have died. Don't be blinded. Don't stay there grieving. Don't stay there mourning. Why? Because this is a new day. This is a new day for you. God is saying, open your eyes. See, I am doing a, a new thing. Now, God told Abraham, leave. Why? Because of the new thing, he wanted him to uh, see in, in him. Now, transition must be or can be, number one, moving from one place to another. Moving from one place to another. We know there are people who are moving from one place to another because of these uh, pandemic and what has happened. There are people who are moving from one place to another. There are those who will be changing their jobs. You are changing your job because all the, the pandemic that has come into our life. There are those either who are in the transition of getting married. That is a transition because this is a life you are not used to. That is a transition. Changing from one job to another can be a transition. Also, promotion can be a transition. And you must know how to handle greatness or blessing or promotion because it can destroy you if you do not know how to change uh, from where you are and where, where you were and where you are. Also, transition can be or uh, might be changing in leadership. Uh, there are many people who either are uh, stuck because they are change of leadership, either political leadership uh, or either where you are working place, there is a, a change of leadership and you are unable to transit. Another being also is starting a new business. There are many of us who are going to start new businesses and that can be a transition where God wants you to have a, a certain uh, mindset which will be able to accommodate the challenges that we are having in transition. Also retirement. We have many people who are retiring and that is transition. It can bring depression in our life if we are unable. Also there is divorce and separation which uh, is a transition and is a negative transition uh, per se. Divorce or anything that brings change from the routine uh, from the normal routine where your life is not moving on the way it is used to move on. Now many people want change but sometimes we are not ready for transition and that's why we must have the wisdom on how to deal with the transition in the season of crisis. Many people want transition but, or changes in our life but what when changes come in our life uh, we respond either sometimes uh, by worry, by fear and such things uh, which are not good. Sometimes we are afraid of it because of what we do not know what lays ahead of us. I want to move forward, but I don't know what is ahead of me. And uh, I, I need the guidance of God. And that's why sometimes people will uh, hesitate. Now, transition sometimes, season of transition, uh, sometimes uh, can be seasons of pain, where you are encountering pain in your life, can be seasons of pain, season of grief, where you are grieving, season of anxiety. It can be season of negative confession, where people confess many things. We call self-inflicting curses. You curse yourself because of what you are lacking or maybe because of where you are. It can also be season of when people make Hasty decision, decisions that are not uh, are not right. You are not sober in your making of decision. You are making decision like Elkanah going to the land of Moab, and when he went to the land of Moab, he died. His two sons died, and we see uh, uh, the wife of Elkanah came back and said he was called Naomi. He came back. She said uh, she accused God that I went out full, I went up happy, out happy, but I have come as uh, God has made me bitter. Don't call me Naomi, call me Mara, because Mara, because God has made uh, my life bitter. God was not responsible of the bitter life that lady lived. It was as a decision the husband made. 
and they went to Moab, and where that's where they met death. Okay, uh, sometimes it can be a season of complaining, like the nation of Israel, when the Lord delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh and brought them into the land where he had promised. In that process of transition, the Bible says only people made uh, it to the promised land, and this is Joshua and Caleb. The rest who saw the miracles and what God did uh, were destroyed in the desert. That was not the, the will or the plan of God to destroy them in the desert. But they were unable to handle transition. They complained. They complained against God. It can also be a season of doubting God. Where men are doubting God. We are doubting the hand of God. We are doubting what God can do. We are doubting the provision of God. We are doubting how can God do this in our life. And you see most of them doubted uh, what God can do in their life. And that means uh, when we are in transition, uh, we need to understand how to respond uh, in a positive way and in a way that will bring glory in our life. Also times of transition can involve several things. And I know this word is so practical because of what we are facing in this season. Sometimes season of transition can involve building from scratch, beginning your life again, beginning that business again, beginning a family again, beginning something again. Abraham began from scratch. Joseph, when he was sold to Egypt, he began a scratch. Daniel, when he went to Babylon, he began a scratch. David began a scratch. And we see the Israelites, when they left Egypt, they began a scratch. It can be a place of beginning anew in your life. And that means you must be motivated. It can also be starting a new life. You start a new life, like Naomi. When she realized that her life was becoming bitter and uh, she was disadvantaged in Moab, she made a decision to leave Moab and went to Israel again. The Bible says she heard uh, that the Lord has visited his people. And the Bible says that there was plenty in the land of Bethlehem. So she came uh, to the land of Bethlehem, the house of God, the house of bread, uh, where she began again. We see also a man called Job. When everything was destroyed in, her, in, the, in his life, uh, the Bible says Satan came and touched his body. He killed his sons. Uh, he destroyed all the wealth that Joseph and Jacob had, uh, and Job had. And after that, uh, the Bible says in Job chapter 42, God remembered Job uh, and delivered him from his uh, the predicament. And he delivered him uh, from the plague that he was in. And he restored the life of Job again. He can be starting a new life again. Also, it can be from uh, starting a new routine in your life. We see a man called Elisha. Elisha was a farmer. And when God wanted him to transit from farming to ministry, the Bible says Elijah came and touched him. And when he touched him, uh, he left farming uh, to become a prophet. We see also Joshua. Joshua was given a higher responsibility. He was a follower, but now comes a place where God wants Joshua to become a leader. That is transition. Elisha from a new routine of life, where he was a farmer to a ministry. Another one is he is a follower to become a leader. And also uh, another one is where we can find ourselves in transition of uh, establishing a new relationship. Either God wants you to have new relationship uh, because of where he wants to take you. And this is Paul is a good example. When Paul was persecuting the church, uh, God removed him from that fellowship uh, and brought him, uh, he brought many men to him uh, who acted as a way of guiding him to what God had in mind for him. And also it can be, as, uh, it, it, it involved also adjusting to a new way of living depending on what kind of transition uh, it is. You adjust to a new kind of living uh, depending on what kind of situation you are in. The book of uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, uh, the Bible says uh, that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Uh, in all your ways, acknowledge him 
and he will make your path straight. The Lord will make your path straight, but you must trust in him. So in times of transition, we should learn to trust in God and lean not on our own understanding. Because when we lean on our own understanding, uh, we will uh, miss the way and we will not be able to receive what God has for us in life in, in, the, season, in the season of transition. Praise be to God. And I believe that God will give you wisdom and understanding on how to do. Now, human life is full of transition. And there are different transitions in life. There are diff every one of us we are in transition. If you are not in transition today, tomorrow, either after two years, three years, you will be in transition. But either if you are in transition today, there's a place where you will find that you are resting, but life is full of transition. Now, transition can be either a positive transition. A positive transition involves either getting married, promotion, employment. It's a positive. It is something that you have been yearning for, expecting for, believing God for. And now it has come a place where this thing has happened. Either beginning ministry or either beginning new employment, going either to abroad, it is a positive transition, owning a car. Yes, you were are, you are commuting through public means, but now here God has given you a car. It is a transition, but you must know how to transit. So a positive transition. And also transition can be a negative transition. A negative transition is a transition that it is something you are not uh, 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 expecting in your life. Either you have, uh, your business has gone down, there is a relationship you never intended, maybe will, uh, uh, it will not work, but now it is not working. You have been sucked, you have suffered loss in many ways, you have, uh, you have lost your loved ones, your wife, your husband, your children, your mother. So that is a negative transition and is, is, is a transition and I say a negative transition, you are forced to transit. You are not willing. When, for instance, a person is, uh, was employed and they are sacked, you are forced to transit. Either to think on how to do things, on how to move on, and how to go on with your life. So it is uh, something that you are forced to enter. You are not prepared to journey. But now you find yourself, you are journeying in a direction that you had not planned for. And that's why Proverbs chapter 3, what we have read there is very key, that in all your ways acknowledge him. Because the Bible said that the, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So you must know how to handle positive transition and you must know how to handle negative transition. There are many people who are broken and destroyed not by the negative transition but by the positive transition. And that's why we have seen many people who are poor, in lack, in need and uh, in one way or another they transited in life. And instead of their life becoming good, uh, their life was destroyed. Also, in, in being to positive and negative transition, uh, there is what also I call personal invented transition. It is a personal invented transition. This is a calculated transition where you plan for it. You say, I want to move from here to there. I want from, to move from this employment to this I want to move from this business to this. It is a personal invented transition. And this transition also, it is where you transit by your own will, by deciding, by making a decision. And also in that line we have divine invented transition. Divine invented transition in our lives. And in this, my viewer, it is a transition where God invents it. It is a divine invented transition where God, like Abraham, the nation of Israel, and many other people were led in a divine way by God. God can be leading you in a divine way without knowing. And this is the confession of Joseph. When the Bible says when his father died, he came to his brothers. The brothers were afraid that that maybe Joseph will revenge on us because of us selling him to the land of Egypt. 
and he told him, you intended to do evil for me, but God intended it for my good. Whether it is a negative transition, you are forced into it. Uh, when Joseph got uh, into Egypt and he, will, he had a wife, uh, the Bible said the first son, uh, he named him Manasseh. And he said that God had made me forget uh, my suffering. The second one was Naphtali. And, uh, he said uh, uh, that uh, God has made me uh, fruitful in my land uh, of suffering. So that means whether the transition is negative, uh, as you handle the process in the wisdom of God, you can forget your trouble in the land of your suffering. Uh, and God can make you fruitful in that land where you are. Divine invested transition where God is the one who is orchestrating your move, directing you in the right way to go, in the things that you should do. Also, we have a transition may be voluntary, where you volunteer yourself, you decide, and that's what I have said, uh, the personal invented. In voluntary transition, uh, it is a negative transition uh, where you find yourself uh, in a way where you must now adjust and be what uh, God wants you to be in that uh, transition. Now, there are several key things uh, that we should be able to master when we are in uh, either this transition, but, but mainly when we are in uh, facing any transition in our life, uh, it is very key for us to understand uh, several things which are very key to enable us to cope with the situation, to enable us to adjust to the thing that God wants us to, to come into, and that means negative reaction to avoid when we are in transition. What a negative reaction. Sometimes people will react in a negative way. And the worst happened to them. What was, not, what was meant to happen cannot happen. And what was not meant to happen happens because of my reaction. Negative reaction to avoid when we are in transition. Number one, spirit of offense. You must be able to overcome any manner of offense. Don't be offended. Don't be offended by people. Don't be offended by God. Don't be offended by the circumstance. Don't be offended by yourself. Number two, avoiding the reaction of bitterness. Don't be bitter in that transition. And instead of you being bitter, look at the bigger plan of God for you. Number three, don't be shocked. That means don't be shocked. There are people who are so shocked. It has taken them two years to recover. It has taken them hand, uh, ten years to recover. It has taken, that means it has gone beyond. That means that they are now mourning. They are now in agony. Instead of sobering up, the Bible says that when David went to Ziegler, this is a place when David was given by the king of Philistines. The Bible says, and they went for war. When they come back, they found their wives, their everything that has been taken away, and their house was burned. The Bible says that many people responded by crying until they had no more strength. The Bible says that when they were in that condition, they planned to stone David. You know, men have a way of blaming others. They thought that David is the one who planned, who brought all this to them. While when they came to David in the book of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 22, there are 23, the Bible says that uh, these men were discontented. They were in debt. The Bible says that uh, they were discontented and they were in bitterness. That means their life was so worse. But when they came to David, uh, by walking with David, uh, they started raising up in life. They, their life started finding a, a certain focus. They found a focus. They started moving in the right way. But when they came to this place, when they, their Malachite took their wives, their children, everything, they started crying and they planned stoning David. The Bible says when David was in that condition, 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6, the Bible said David 
was greatly distressed because men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his son and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. He knew the way to come out of this predicament and this thing is to find strength in God. He overcame the shock. He overcame everything. And he stand of responding in bitterness, he found strength in God. Number three is denial. There are many people who are living in denial. They do not want to accept the reality that this thing has happened. I am no longer employed. I am no longer having that business. What is the next step? What does God want me to do? What is, is in the mind of God? God has a plan for you. Others, other reaction is depression. Some people will be depressed. That is number five. Number six is withdraw. Sometimes we withdraw from people. We withdraw from going to church. We withdraw from fellowshiping with the people. We are not talking to our family members. We are not talking to your wife. You are not talking to your children. You are not talking to your husband. You are withdrawing. And God does not want you to withdraw. He wants you to face this issue. That's what the Bible says uh, when uh, Elijah, uh, first King chapter 19 uh, and verse 1, uh, the Bible says that uh, when uh, Elijah heard that, uh, the, that this uh, man, uh, this woman called Je uh, Je uh, Jezebel want to kill him, uh, the Elijah ran for his life. He ran for his life. He withdrew. That was, uh, that was depression attacking him. And uh, lastly but not least is confusion. We end up being confused in the time of uh, transition in our life. So God wants you to know how to handle transition, what to do and what not to do. How to respond in the wisdom and in the way that God will deliver you and remove you from what you are facing at that particular time. And that's why the Holy Spirit is key in leading you in the season of transition. You must look for guidance. You must look for mentors. You must pray for God to bring the right people so that you are not going to end up being stuck in, in what you have encountered in life. The book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 1, we see the aspect of the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness. Now that is the aspect I want us to see here. The aspect of being led by God. Being led by God. Being led by God to come out of it. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit of God. He was filled by the Spirit. He was full of the Spirit, and he was led by the Spirit of God. The book of Romans, chapter 8, and verse 14, the Bible says, And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Sometimes we miss the direction when we are in a negative transition or in a positive transition because we do not know what is the mind of God in that transition. We do not know what is in the mind of God. And that is very key. What is the mind of God? Has my life come to an end because this thing has happened? There are many things we are mourning. And God wants us to move forward. Our God is a God of restoration. Our God can restore you back. Our God can heal you. Our God can restore where and what you have lost. He can bring back. The Bible says what the, the locust has eaten. God can restore. The Bible says God is a God of restoration. And that means uh, instead of mourning, instead of grieving, instead of blaming others, instead of blaming yourself, instead of wondering, know what is in the mind of God and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you out of it. To lead you out of it. 
to lead you out so that you can start to celebrate uh, when God uh, is uh, uh, giving you direction uh, in uh, everything that is happening in your life. Praise be to God. So, the Holy Spirit wants to guide you. The Holy Spirit wants to usher you in the new direction that God has for you. Now, what to do when we are in transition? I have said number one, we must understand the guidance of God and the Holy Spirit guiding us in the way that is meant for us. So number one, when we are in transition, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 to 9. God came to Joshua after Moses was dead. He told Joshua, be strong and of good courage. For to these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I saw to their forefathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you and do not turn from it to the right and or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. That means God wanted Joshua to be strong. God wanted Joshua to be strong. So number one, be strong and courageous. And where do you find your strength? Your strength is found is in the, in the word of God. Number two, prayer and inquiring God from God. We must be men who pray and men who are inquiring from God to know what is the next move so that I can, be, I can make my step and, I, and walk the way God wants me to walk. So that's number two. You must pray and inquire from God. Number three, look for godly counsel. Look for godly counsel. Proverbs chapter 11. And verse 14, you must look for godly counsel. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. You will be uh, safe when you look for counsel. Look for godly counsel. The Bible says that where there is no counsel, the people fall. You can fall when you do not have the right counsel. Number four is uh, allow God to comfort you. What you have lost, allow God to comfort you. Because God is a God of comfort. Don't just look for comfort from people. Genesis 37 from 34 to 35. The Bible speaks about uh, Jacob refusing to be comforted by anyone. Then Jacob tore his cloth, put sackcloth on his waist and mourned for his son many days. All and all his sons and all his daughters arose to comfort him uh, but he refused to be comforted, uh, and he said, uh, For I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning, uh, thou his father wept for him. It was a transition, but he was unable to handle, he was unable to handle the loss. So allow God to comfort him. We see there, men uh, came to comfort. His sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused the comfort. The next one is, uh, Expect people to misunderstand you in the season of transition. Men to misunderstand you and others will leave you. When you are in transition, there are people who must misunderstand you. The book of Ruth, uh, we see Ruth uh, verse 1, uh, chapter 1 verse 14. Naomi said that he, she wants to, to go back. The Bible said now it came to pass. In the day when judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of, uh, of, of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the land of, of uh, the country of Moab. Verse 14 tells us uh, that, uh, that Naomi left. And when he left her, uh, when, le when she left her, uh, Ruth went with her, but Ophrah left her. That means there are people who will stick with you. And there are people who will go with you to the next phase of your life. That means uh, expect people to misunderstand you and others will leave you. Another one, guard your heart from bitterness. Guard your heart from bitterness. The book of Ruth, verse 1, verse 20, uh, chapter 1, verse 20. Naomi was so bitter, but she said to them, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt with uh, has dealt very bitterly with me. 
Deal with every bitterness. Guard your heart from bitterness. Don't allow your heart to be bitter in any way because that is not the right way. Now, what to do next? Uh, it is don't make a negative confession. Make right confession. Don't make wrong confession. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 20 to 21. The Bible said the power of life and death is in the tongue. You must make confession that aligns with the will of God for your life. That is what God wants you to do. You must number one be strong. Pray and inquire from the Lord. Look for God will come so. Allow God to comfort you. Guard your heart from against bitterness. Expect people to misunderstand you and others to leave you. Make a right confession and also make right decision. Make right decision based on what God wants you to do in every particular moment in your life. Praise be to God. Make the right decision that God wants you to make in the time of transition. So I believe that the Lord is ministering to you. And instead of your life becoming worse, Instead of your life becoming bitter, you can have the wisdom to transit in the time of crisis. In the time of crisis. When men are giving up, when men are worried, when men are doubting God. God told Abraham that leave. Some of us, God is telling us to leave. Okay? Some of us, God is telling us stop mourning. Some of us, God is telling us Forget the former beings. Some of us, God is telling us, see the new thing that I'm doing in your life. Some of us, is God is telling us that now I am giving you a new responsibility, like Joshua. Some of us, God is telling us, don't mourn for Saul. Look, I have appointed. I have chosen a man of my own heart. A new relationship is coming on your way. A new business is coming on your way. Tenders are coming in your way. Many things are coming in your way. So don't keep up mourning, uh, but believe God for the new thing uh, that is about to spring up in your life. I want to leave you with those words that do not remember. Don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on the past. But focus on the new thing that God is doing in your life. And I pray that you will be having the wisdom of God and the word of God will dwell in you richly so that you can be able to know how to handle positive and negative transition in your life. You can be able to know the season where you are in, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the Lord bring you counselors. May the Lord bring you wise men. May the Lord cause you to have understanding like the sons of Issachar. May the Lord open your eyes so that you can see those new doors He's opening for you in your life. May your life not end in bitterness, but may you come to a place where you'll appreciate the season that you have passed through in life in the mighty name of the Lord. And may the Lord cause you to have strength in the name of the Lord. So I, I pray that the God will surround you with counselors. The Lord will surround you with his wisdom in this season of crisis in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I believe the word of God uh, has been a blessing to you today. And I want to pray with you today. I know maybe you are there, you are in transition. And maybe you are wondering, which way, Pastor? Who will I call? Where will I go? What will I do with my life? I want to tell you, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. The Bible says, see, I am doing a new thing. I pray for you today. But the Lord will lead you. The Lord will direct you. As he directed Abraham to a place where he has time for him. May the Lord direct you to where he has destined for you to be so that you can continue achieving his purpose in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my viewer. I bless them today that in the season of transition, this season will mold them to be all what you intend for their life. Father, I pray that they will transit in that crisis in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless them with understanding in the name of Jesus Christ Do we pray and give that. So we bless the Lord for you. If you are not born again, at the end of this program, you see our contacts there. You can contact with us. If you need counsel, if you need our prayers, call us through those contacts. You can email us and uh, we will uh, be there 
will pray with you. Somebody will pray for you. Somebody will come, will be there standing for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So this is G uh, Moses Maora coming from Jesus Living Fountain Ministry. And we encourage you to love or to like our Facebook page at Jesus Living Fountain Ministry. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Jesus Living Fountain Ministry. God bless you so much. Until we meet again, shalom, shalom. Jesus is Lord. God bless you so much. Amen.